Hi everybody, this is Kate in studio. Wheel of Mystery block piecing help. So we have th three pieces in the Wheel of Mystery. A, B, C. So here I'm piecing, lining up the exterior curve and the interior curve. A is on the bottom. We want to have our interior curve or our valley curve on the bottom. You can see that the engineered corners line up perfectly on the outside of the block and we're going to slowly ease these pieces together. I'm using my stiletto, John's curved stiletto for piecing. It helps me eliminate the use of pins and ease the pieces together about a half inch at a time. I do have this video sped up a little bit. I do move quite slowly when I'm doing my curve piecing. About a three quarter to a half inch from the end, you're gonna wanna make sure that those dog ears line up. And then sew to completion. There's four a pieces and four B pieces per block. You can see I'm using A as a light value piece and B as a dark value piece. In order to create the secondary pattern of the Wheel of Mystery block, you do want to mine the values of your pieces. ahead and about a three quarter to a half inch from the end of that seam you're going to want to line up both pieces and sew to completion. Here's my third AB piece. Line up the dog ears. Slowly ease those pieces together. I'm moving my hands in the opposite directions of each other. I'm moving the A piece, or the piece on the deck, away from the needle to the left, and the top B piece, I'm pulling it towards myself, my right hand, with the stiletto to line up those pieces. This is the final a, B segment of the block. When piecing this project as a as more than one block project, you're going to want to piece all of your A, B, C segments and design wall before piecing into blocks. She started a little early. Take a few more stitches, ah, and then line up. There you go. Okay. I'm just double checking that the intersection is good. Lines up with the outside of the block, and we're gonna f f initially finger press, and then press with a hot dry iron towards B. So, Again, checking the intersection at the middle and the outside of the block looks square. Finger press A over B and then hit that seam with a hot dry iron. Nice and smooth. 
Okay, that's the exterior curve. And um, we're going to attach C. So actually, A is on top this time, C is on the bottom. And that's the very point of C lining up with the very point of A. You could put a pin in this to make it a little easier to bring up to the needle. Sew on about a quarter of an inch and then start to organize those pieces together. You're going to want to pull A towards you to the, to the right and C away from your stiletto to the left. I have the A, B segment kind of floating on the top of my left hand as I move C to the left. A couple more stitches there would have been easier to line up. There you go. And then go ahead and sew off the edge. three quarters of an inch, half inch from the edge, line up your dog ears and sew off to the edge. I am holding down C with my thumbnail. It's kind of hard to see, but I am controlling both the top and the bottom with my left hand there for just a second. Line up the edge of your dog ears and sew off to the edge of the block. Last one. And again, for color value, I did use a dark B, so I need to use a dark C to create this light interior block. If you were doing a dark interior block, of course your A's would be dark, and your B and C would be light. You can see on this angle, how I'm using my thumbnail a little bit better. C piece is very small, hard to control sometimes, but just be patient with yourself. One stitch at a time. Three quarters of an inch, line up the edge of your block, and sew off. It makes a nice cute little V right there at the edge of the block.
Okay, here's a very important step. We want to alleviate the bulk in the center, so I'm going to have you clip. Oh, it's real close. It's an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch closer to your sewn line. I'm going to show you right there. Just a little whisper of fabric between the sewn seam. We're going to be able to rotate our seams because of this clip. So use a good pair of scissors. Get right up close to the edge of your seam but not crossing it. And not right up against it. You want to leave a little bit of fabric. A couple thread widths. And then we're going to finger press before we press with a hot dry iron. I want you to press the narrow edge of C over A. And then switch it up. The fat edge or the fat part of C is going to press t towards A. Or, sorry, away from A. One more time, we're going to press the narrow end of C away from C towards A and the fat end of C towards itself away from A. As you're finished segments, now we're going to attach our segments together. It's important to do an exterior curve on the top and an interior curve on the bottom whenever possible. So at this point I'm lining up the edge of my block. A is on top of C. I'll make that same little V onset. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sew on about a quarter of an inch and then start adjusting my pieces for curves. I should have taken a few more stitches. You really do want to be a little closer to the seam, to the end of the seam before you start adjusting for the end of the seam. But as long as your seam allowances are all facing the correct direction, go ahead and sew on. Okay, we're going to start. This is the wide end of C, if it wasn't apparent to you, we're going to line up the outside of the block. C's on the deck of the sewing machine, A's on top. 
and sew on about a quarter of an inch and then start adjusting for the seam, curved seam. Those center seam intersection clips are very handy. You know if you're more than an eighth of an inch off those two notches meeting, you might not have enough seam allowance to finish this particular curved seam properly. A couple more stitches and adjusting for the end of the seam. Make sure that steam allowance faces the needle and sew off. I want to have a nice gap right there. A couple of fingernails width, um, sometimes it's more or less. You don't want to sew so, so tight of an intersection that you don't get any gap. As long as you can get your fingernail in there, you'll have enough. We're going to do the same clip and flip to this seam allowance. We're going to clip that center intersection. I'm using my 7-Elevens which are very nice embroidery scissors from Femore. They're super sharp. Again, pressing the narrow end of C away from C towards A, and then the wider end of C towards itself, or A over C. And that's two segments of three together on both sides of the block. I like to kind of lay one half on top of the other half and line it up from the outside of the block. See, I'm looking at the corners there. And then I'm going to peek and see if C is lined up with itself on the outside of the block. Okay. So this part, we want to double check that all our A's are coming together right in the center. So I'm looking at the two A's with seam allowance pointing at each other and making sure that those points line up. I'm going to sink a pin right into the gap the quarter inch. So the two gaps, the gap on the front on the gap on the back for C. It's a little hard to see. Right at the quarter inch there. Okay. Now I'm just like walking the seam where the seam backwards just make sure I line it up correctly and I have had enough I'm lining up A and C again so on a quarter of an inch and then start adjusting for the curve Line it up about a half inch at a time and just you take your time. So slow and accurate. It's easier to do it on fresh 
fabric one time and try and rip and re-sew several times. stuck my photo in between the layers in order to grab C and make it line up with A. So it's a little different than I've been lining up before. There's a forward facing seam allowance on the bottom. That's what I'm checking right now. I wanted to make sure that forward facing seam allowance hits the needle first. So, okay, I've sewn over. I take my pin out of the gap. Stop the very center and then we're going to start to readjust for the opposite curve. So this time our C is on top of our A. So it's a little bit harder to adjust the fabric this direction but at least you're almost done. Little center intersections match up. Carefully just continue to ease the pieces together. I got excited, I was looking at the end already. Okay. Line up with the edge of the block carefully and sew off. And you're done with the piecing. We have a little bit more seam adjustment to do, but that is the sewn block. Looks kind of funky right now, but we're going to adjust it. I'm just double checking. I still have a gap there in the green fabric and a gap in the blue fabric. Checking the center. I'm happy with that. We're going to adjust this bulky seam in just a minute. We do need to clip our C intersections, C and A intersections again, and press them accordingly. Right up to, but not over that stitching line. Okay, finger press that just for now. We have to adjust, we have to address the bulk in the center before we can press. So, what you need to do is using a large body pin or your needle like stiletto and physically pick out a couple of stitches at the very point of C. And these are going to be the seams you've sewn first after the three segments. So this is your segments of six that you're actually taking this, just a few stitches out. I want to make sure that you understand it's not clipping the seam allowance. We're leaving the tails long so we don't affect the stitching. Create a hole in your pattern. So we're going to turn it around do the same to the other side. Just physically unstitch these two lines of stitches without harming the thread. This is going to allow us to release the intersection and kind of rotate it. So you can you see when I kind of manipulate it with my fingers that half that seam allowance is going to go to one side and half is going to lay on the other and follow the pressing that we've been doing with our C pieces the entire project. So see, 
All the C pieces are pressed outward now at the point. I'm just showing you how the layers kind of unfold after taking just those few stitches out. That's the finished block from the front and the back. And then we're going to zoom in so you can see the pressing in the center of your block. You can hardly notice those gaps from far away. So Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel and if you need anything, if you need any help, just let us know and we'll make you a video.